I just covered how to draw resonance structures and I used SO3 as an example. So sulfur trioxide has these eight resonance structures and um, I want to talk about what they physically are so that you don't get confused. A lot of times when I'm drawing them out I'm going to use words like moving electrons or shuffling electrons and in reality these resonance structures aren't different molecules. They aren't different ions, they aren't different things. They actually all describe the same sulfur trioxide. They're not in equilibrium with each other. It's not like sometimes it's like this and then sometimes it's like that. The ground state of sulfur trioxide is a combination of all of these resonance structures. That is what these mean. Um, Lewis structures are models to help us think about and draw out and describe what a molecule or system is or where these valence electrons are and it's there to show you kind of like some of the connectivity some of the bonding that is uh, happening in a molecule that doesn't mean that Lewis structures define nature they don't create nature it's not like Lewis invented these things and suddenly nature was like oh yeah let's let's have chemistry that's uh, representative of what Lewis was thinking in fact nature has existed for billions of years and bonding has existed for billions of years and we are scientists and we come up with ways of describing them models that are always going to be wrong but they're useful and Lewis structures give us sort of snapshots of or perspectives on what a molecule is like. So it's like someone takes a photo of me. That photo is a likeness of me, but it's not me. You can have multiple people taking multiple photos of me at the same time from different vantage points. And those photos might look very different. They might have a different angle. They might be capturing like me with my eyes closed versus my eyes open. And they're all representations of me. They're all meaningful, but none of them is me. And likewise, each of these resonance structures is just one piece of the perspective of how we think about this molecule. So in reality, when I think of SO3, I think of it as having a double bond between sulfur and all the oxygens, but not like a complete double bond. I think of it as having a multiple bond that has a lot of uh, double bond character, but also some single bond character. So when I think of SO3, I think of this. Sulfur, single bonded to oxygen and then I draw like a partial double bond. That's what these resonance structures are telling me. Yes, this is going to be the closest to reality. The reason why I say that is because this resonance structure with all these double bonds has the most bonding between sulfur and oxygen it maximizes bonding and it has the least formal charges it has the least charge separation so that makes it a more favorable more important a bigger contributor of the actual physical structure of sulfur trioxide but these also play a role as well so these aren't going to be like equal weight, but they are going to be uh, somewhat weighted. And th this one is going to be more weighted than this one because it has more bonding. It's, it's completed sulfur's octet and, and then some. And it also has less charges. It's moved positive and negatives closer together than this has. Like this has positives and, neg and negatives not even in the same element. It has them separated across from oxygen and sulfur. So that's a charge separation. That means it's higher energy. So nature is going to tend to favor lower energy structures. 
So the actual natural structure is going to be closer to this than it is to that. Also, if you look at all these, there's a lot of symmetry. And that tells me that there's not going to be a difference between this oxygen and that oxygen, or this oxygen and that oxygen. They're all going to be bonded about the same. And the reason why I say this is because if I look at this structure versus this structure versus this structure, they all treat each oxygen identically. Each of the oxygens is represented here as having a single bond somewhere in this set. And then here, each of the oxygens, again, is represented in two of these as having a single bond. And then here, each oxygen is, is represented as having a single bond, all of them at the same time. And here, none of them. So it's not like one of these oxygens gets more single bond contributors. You can call these structures, these individual structures, resonance contributors. I sometimes do that. So uh, it's not like one oxygen is, is favored or disfavored in terms of bonding. They all have the same bonding. And that's also represented in this picture that I drew out. So this averaging of resonance structures where I favor ones that don't have lots of formal charge separation or have the least formal charge separation and have the most uh, octets filled. That is what I end up drawing out here. So my guess would be that the this molecule would have bonding that looks more like a double bond than a single bond between sulfur and oxygen. I would guess that the oxygen sulfur bond is going to be the same between all of these. Like every oxygen and sulfur bond is going to be the same distance. So this distance, this distance, and this distance will be the same. And I would also guess that in reality there's going to be a partial positive charge on sulfur. I can draw that as like a delta plus. Whoops. I was supposed to be delta, but it came out as an ampersand. Okay, delta plus, and then a bunch of delta minuses for each oxygen. So, and I, I know this because when I think about, if I averaged all these out, this has no positive charge on sulfur, and this is the most important contributor, but all the other ones have positive charges on sulfur. This has no pos negative charges on oxygen, but all the other ones have partial negative charges, sorry, negative charges, like full actual negative charges, um, on the oxygens, right? Like every oxygen has at least, uh, well, it has like three contributors to put a negative charge on it. So that's where the partial negative charge is coming from. It's the character that is being um, averaged in to, the, to this model from each of these resonance contributors. So I put all this stuff in brackets and that's meaning that you average all the structures out to give you a better picture of what the molecule is actually doing. And that's how you think of resonance structures. That's how you use them. Um, I will do other examples that are a little bit more helpful and that demonstrate the value of resonance structures more. Um, we'll do things like look at structures where if you just draw one resonance structure, it is not symmetric. This was an example where the resonance structures were all symmetric or, or can be symmetric, like this one, the best one is actually symmetric. So you're like probably not so uh, excited about this conclusion that all the oxygen sulfur bonds are the same distance, but we'll do some where if you just drew one Lewis structure, it would make it seem like there are differences between bond lengths that really aren't there.